Hey guys, Chuk here with Chuk's Outdoor Adventures, uh, coming out to you with a new video that I'm very excited about because I just got the 4 inch 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, uh, 500. Um, super excited about this and I feel like it's the ultimate um, bear backup gun for Alaska and I'll tell you why. I, I just had to upgrade. I, I'm still a fan of the 10 millimeter. Um, guys, don't worry. I, I still love the 10 millimeter. I'm going to get a new Glock 20 and, and keep tweaking that, you know, just having semi-auto and I'm very impressed with the power of the 10 millimeter. I love 10 millimeter now. The, the ammo is cheap. Um, you know, if you find good deals, so I'm really happy about it, but I, I'm getting dropped off at some crazy places by myself with some where people get mauled every year by big giant brown bears and the 10 millimeters is not going to do it for me. Even 44 Magnum is not going to make me feel as safe as this. This is going to make me feel really safe. Um, yeah, because especially for a charging brown bear that's like 700 pounds plus, um, yeah, even 44 Magnum is not going to do it for me. So anyways, um, I want to go through this. I've also, I'll talk about the, the Diamond D Guides Choice chest holster made right here in Alaska. Very happy with it. I wasn't going to get a Kydex for a revolver. you got to go with a, a chest holster like this. I consider it more of a bandolier. I'm going to fix it up so it's a little bit higher on the chest, but it's kind of like a bandolier holster. But anyways, um, just going through this this gun, um, I'm very excited about it. Um, it I'm not going to lie, though. It makes me nervous. It makes me very nervous just because I've had it programmed for so many years into my head that, that Smith & Wesson steel is less stronger than Ruger's, that the guns will blow up. And that's because of all the times I've read on those 44 Magnum boxes, only use in a Ruger revolver, you know, only use in the Red Hawk or the you know, Blackhawk, whatever. Um, and, you know, that's because those Rugers were really tough and made for those heavy loads. But I, I think this this will handle it. You know, I, from what the reviews I've seen have mostly been good, and um, I think this will handle the power of the 500 Magnum. Um, it's only got five shots, which is a little disappointing, but it's also good because, you know, the, you know, that's more steel to protect that, that chamber and this cylinder. So, um, but the look of it, the the look of a of a Smith and Wesson revolver is just so much cooler, more beautiful than a Ruger. And and you know, I I look at the Ruger as a workhorse. And I'll keep comparing this to the Ruger um, Red Hawk 44 Alaskan because that's what I had before. Um, and it, I felt it saved my life. I was charged with by a bear and I shot at it, missed it, of course, but. Um, you know, it, it didn't uh, didn't mess up on me, and that's why I'm going with this too. Because a uh, semi-auto, you know, the springs wear out, the mags can go bad, so many little things can go wrong, and I don't want to die. It's like Captain Kirk when the the Good Kirk, Bad Kirk episode from the '60s. I want to live. That's how Chook feels. I want to live. That's why I got this because I want to live. But anyways, um, it's heavy. It's heavier than that Ruger Alaskan. You know, they say it's about 56 ounces, so it's 20 ounces heavier than the, that Ruger Red Hawk Alaskan I had, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel that heavy. It, it, it feels light enough, um, I still need to work out this chest holster, that I could get it out quick and um, you know shoot at a bear if I'm being charged. It, it's, it's not, it doesn't feel overly heavy. Um, but the, the thing I love about it, I couldn't believe it, is the trigger pull. It's got the Smith & Wesson trigger pull that I gotta say, guys, it makes the the Ruger revolver trigger pull just horrid. The that Ruger Red Hawk Alaskan that I had crappy trigger pull compared to this. This is just smooth as butter. You you'd think that it'd take a lot to move a big giant cylinder like this on the X frame, but it really doesn't. It's just just incredible. And that's the double action. I like the double action. The single action, you barely have to touch it, and it goes off. You just I don't know what it's what how many pounds it's rated at, but I just barely touch it and it fires. I love it. Um, just totally blown away by the by the trigger pull. Um, way better than Ruger. So if the steel holds up, if this can really you know be as tough as they say it is, it can handle these big 
500 rounds, then um, I'm totally sold. And the cool factor, I mean, these ports are awesome. One thing, if anybody knows why I can't shoot the, uh, it gives me some extra ports to change out for lead ammo, and th these are the ones for jacketed ammo, but um, can I, I'm, I'm not sure if, why I can't shoot lead ammo through these ports, so if anybody knows that, please let me know. But uh, definitely the cool factor, the ports, um, just the look of the Smith & Wesson. They, they do revolvers right. Smith & Wesson does revolvers right. So I'm, I'm very happy with this. Um, and, and the recoil, you know, I'm going to be shooting it in a couple days. I'll post that. The recoil is supposed to be tolerable, you know, because of the ports and the round itself has better recoil than a 454 Casul, which I, I did consider getting one of those too. I was very close to getting a 454 because um, I wanted to go higher than, than a 44 mag. And the ballistics on this definitely beat a 454. No, not by a whole lot, but it's definitely more powerful. Um, they're just huge. I, uh, I was messing around. I took my 460 Roland. I took a 460 Roland uh, round. And I, just, just to, you know, be, uh, just to, for the interest of it, just to see how it compared. And I dropped it right through the cylinder and it fell out the bottom, a 460 rolling round. These, these things are just giant. And of course, I had to go see my friends at Alaska Ammo and get some Underwood Extreme Penetrator. And it just blows me away how, how huge these things are. These are, are giant. You know, this is a 350 grain Extreme Penetrator bullet that goes... 1850 feet per second um you know it reminds me of that you got those new that new gunslinger movies coming out you know i read the books when i was a kid um and it was supposed to be a 44 but on the old pictures in the book they showed the gunslinger with this just massive revolver with these giant rounds and this is what i imagined they would look like just monstrous um and, and if this won't put down a, a big brown bear i don't know what will this is this is the best bet you have in Alaska for a handgun. Really, you want a shotgun or a, you know, a 4570 or something to put something down charging. But if, if you have to, if you're in tight spaces and stuff going through brush, um, this is what I want. This is what I want. Uh, because like I said, I'm, I'm getting dropped off by myself in Admiralty Island. These bears aren't used to seeing people. They maul people every year. It's just covered in brown bears and deer. And if they see you hauling a a deer down the mountain, they're just gonna try to eat you or take it from you. I mean, it's just, it's just a madhouse there. Um, so anyways, I'm really excited about this, this revolver. I think it's perfect for Alaska. Um, that's about it. Let me know what you guys think. I'm, I'm gonna be taking this with me on my adventures here in Alaska, and uh, I'm gonna test it out. Also, it comes with this case. Smith & Wesson did a nice job with this case. I, I like it. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with Ruger's cases, but, uh, I kind of like this one a little more, um, you know, and it comes with the gun lock and the extra port, some tools, but just a great job by Smith and Wesson. Um, I'm just ecstatic. And of course the, I wasn't going to get a Kydex chest holster. I was not going to, you know, I like that Kenai Gunfighters one for the Glock. Not if, if you've got a revolver, you need the, the Diamond D. Guides Choice chest holster made here in Alaska. You need this. Now, I was disappointed I didn't get the one with the bullet holders, so I'm going to have to figure something out to hold extra rounds. If you guys got some ideas for me, you know, maybe they make attachments for this or I could get a new strap with the bullet holders because I'm worried about that. You know, I want to get fast at reloading. Um, but you can't go wrong with this chest holster. Now, the thong, I am probably just going to take off because it's pretty tight. I still need to break it in or keep it behind here because like I said in one of my other videos, a guy, oh, it was about four years ago, he was mauled and he was being attacked by a brown bear. He pulled his, his, his weapon out, he tried to, and it got stuck on a leather thong. And it didn't say what holster he was wearing, but I, it's pretty easy to guess that it was this one because it's still popular here in Alaska. All the stores have them, all the guys wear them. Um, so, you know, you gotta pull it out quick. I'm, I'm not gonna have that leather thong in the way. Uh, when I get charged by a bear. But yeah, you can't go wrong with, uh, with this leather chest holster. So let me know what you guys think. Please like and subscribe. And it's Chook, your friend in the field.